Okay, this video is, you know, a pretty simple video here. Just going to talk about the difference between Gulliver and a Lilliputian. So Gulliver comes from the story of Gulliver's travels by Jonathan Swift. And once he reached the other island, the Lilliputians, you know, found him asleep. And they just bound him and tied him to the ground. They held him down. They held him back. And the point I'm making is that by far the most powerful thing in the world by a factor of a thousand for the treatment of chronic disease is the low fat, low sodium vegan diet. But conventional medicines like Lilliputians, they run all the major institutions, they write all the standard guidelines, they control the standard of care. And basically, they're holding back the treatment of chronic disease like a bunch of Lilliputians. It's also true that a big part of it is the patients. The vast majority of patients, at least 95%, don't want to change their diet. And most people, most average people, they really do not have much thinking ability. And they simply try to think of everything in a social way. Everything in moderation. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Go with the flow. And because of that, you can't be successful long-term in health and aging if you think that way. It has to be more like biblical thinking. Thou shalt not eat meat. Thou shalt not eat oil. Because uh, moderation doesn't work with nutrition. It's kind of like smoking cigarettes. You don't smoke cigarettes ever. No more cigarettes. Not one. Um, if you have an alcoholic, you tell them not one drink. Not at all. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let's go to the next slide here. So what's the point about this? Chronic disease is typically treated with a pill. And the cure rate for pills is 0%. If you start out taking a pill for diabetes and you only treat it that way, you'll be taking pills until you die, until you start getting insulin injections. They never cure the disease. Same thing with hypertension. The cure rate for hypertension with a pill is 0%, okay? But if you go low-fat vegan, you can cure that, you know, most of the time, at least 90% in the experience of a lot of famous persons like Pritikin, McDougal, etc. Hypertension, if you treat it early, you should be able to cure it 100% of the time, most of the time. There'll be some rare, rare, rare exceptions, okay? Like people talk about a tumor that causes hypertension, pheochromocytoma. And my only, my, I've been a doctor uh, 30 years. You know how many times I've seen a pheochromocytoma in my entire career? Twice, okay? That's how rare it is. People are always looking for these rare things, renal artery stenosis. You will almost never see that, okay? And even if you had it, the best thing to do would be go low-fat vegan. It's not that easy to stent or surgerize the renal artery stenosis. Yes, sometimes it can be done. Yes, sometimes it does work and it really helps the patient. But diet's the best thing to do. Okay, obesity. You know, you eat low-fat, low-sodium vegan like the rice-eating Asians before 1970. There was no such thing as a fat person in the countries where they were eating like 85 to 90% of their calories from rice. And that's white rice because it's so low in fat, only 1% fat. Impotence, you know. People often maintain their potency into their late years eating these low-fat, plant-based diets. On the other hand, eating a typical standard American diet, it's like at least 50% of men are impotent by the age of 50. Um, and these other diseases, cancer, it doesn't guarantee you won't get it or you guarantee you'll get long-term survival, but your odds are much better. If you read cancer survivors long-term, that's, you know, like one of the most common things by far they do is go low-fat, vegan, vegan low-sodium vegan, preferably with no oils. There's lots of people who've written about that. Autoimmune diseases, yeah, if you eat the fiber in the plant foods, you'll restore, your, you'll restore the good bacteria. You've got a good chance to do so to a large degree, and that can help prevent leaky gut. Okay, abdominal pressure syndrome, we talked about that. So anyways, that was the point I want to make is that it's like the difference between being a Gulliver or a Lilliputian in terms of your ability to help patients with chronic disease if you know about the low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet. And that's also why you can have some professor, the head professor, at Harvard or some other Ivy League school or Stanford. And if they don't know the low-fat vegan diet, they're just clowns, okay? They, they, they can't accomplish things with these diseases. Look at coronary artery disease, Esselstyn diet. Out of 198 patients, every single one of them is cured of coronary artery disease. The only patient who ends up having a recurrent complication is the patient who didn't follow the diet. It works, okay? There's no other diet where you've got those types of results. And it tends to be good for just about everything because it's a species-specific diet to make humans healthy. So just be glad you know about this. I've seen tons and tons and tons of people die, suffer, get amputations and strokes because they didn't know this. This is like the most valuable thing you could know. And what's the most valuable thing you can know as well is starch is the way. I mean, you know, that's one thing you got to give credit to Dr. McDougal. He told you like about the most important things you can know. Eat as many calories as possible from starch. 90% is a good amount of calories to get from starch. 
Um, and he also said, avoid fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. Nathan Pritikin said, fat is bad. Because there's tremendous push. Good fats this, good fats that. In my opinion, that's all a bunch of BS. So just so you know, I've talked about that in a bunch of other lectures. Uh, fat's not what, you know, and people say, oh, well, the fats in nuts is different. Or the fats in flax, it's different. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't want those fats. Anyways, there are some subtle nuances between omega-6, omega-3, and MUFA, monounsaturated fatty acid like olive oil. But my advice, don't go seeking those things out. You get enough uh, omega-3s from the plants you eat. And we talked about that plenty in other lectures. The big point of this lecture was you go from being a Lilliputian to a Gulliver once you embrace 100%, you know, whole food, low fat, low sodium, uh, plant-based diet.